Hello class, welcome to lesson one of topic number seven, where I am looking at uh, the law of meetings. The law of meetings. In this topic, I shall be focusing on the following. I will begin by looking at the various types of meetings the various types of meetings that we can have in a company. I will also proceed on to look at the essentials. I'll proceed on to look at the essentials of a meeting, the essentials of a meeting. And in particular, we shall begin by looking at the notice for a meeting. Then I shall consider proxy or proxies, then I shall look at matters relating to quorum for company meetings. Then there are further essentials rel relating to the proceedings. The proceedings at the meeting, the proceedings at the meeting where essentials such as the chairperson of the meeting come up the chairperson of the meeting, issues relating to voting, voting at the meeting, matters relating to resolutions, matters relating to resolutions at the meeting, and then finally we shall look at minutes, the minutes uh, at the meeting minutes at the meeting. So probably this far, we should have done our first lesson, then we could consider the second uh, the second part, that is the proceedings at the meeting where the essentials are the chair, voting, resolutions, and minutes as another lesson altogether. So before we look at the types of the meetings we can have in a company, maybe we should ask ourselves why these meetings will be held. Uh, you notice there will be various meetings that will be held with uh, different objectives to be met. For instance, if it is the director's meeting, then they could be meeting to share ideas on how the management of the company is being carried out. Uh, they could be meeting for purposes of making decisions on matters relating to the running of the company. They could be having meetings to consider matters that have been raised by members or such things such as investments that they would wish to make on behalf of the company. If it is the meeting of the members, then they could be meeting to approve uh, certain things, to adopt uh, resolutions of the board, to make declarations, um, to, to, to make approvals for payment of dividends, to approve financial statements prepared by the board. So depending on the type of the meeting that will be held by the company, then we could be able to tell what the objective of this meeting uh, will be. So let's begin with the types of meetings. The types of meetings uh, that can be conducted in a company, there are a number we can possibly have one known as the statutory the statutory meeting of the company we can have a meeting known as the annual the annual general meeting the annual general meeting of the company we have another meeting known as the extra the extraordinary the extraordinary uh, general meeting, the extraordinary general meeting of the company. We can also possibly have a board, a board meeting, a board meeting in a company. It is also possible to have a class, a class meeting, a class meeting in a company. It is also possible to have um, a creditors meeting. It is also possible to have a creditors, a creditors meeting. So all these six are possible meetings that we can have conducted by a company, by various persons for various reasons within the company. So what I now want us to do 
is to look at each of these meetings and say something about it. So who is holding this meeting? When is this meeting being held? And what is the objective of this particular meeting? Beginning with the first, which is the statutory meeting. The statutory, the statutory meeting. The statutory meeting. Now, the statutory meeting is described as the first meeting. This is usually the first meeting of the members. This is the first meeting of the members of uh, the company. The first meeting of the members of the company. Now, this meeting is compulsory. It is a compulsory meeting. It's a compulsory meeting. It is a compulsory meeting for public companies. It is a compulsory meeting for public companies. It is a meeting that is usually held, uh, you would say, immediately after incorporation. After the company has been formed, this will be the first occasion where the members of this, of this company will be meeting. And we are insisting for all those companies that are formed as public, all PLCs, they must have this meeting known as the statutory meeting. Usually... It is to be held within after one month, one month, but not exceeding, not exceeding three months, not exceeding three months after, after incorporation, not exceeding three months after incorporation. So once a company has been formed, after one month of formation, but not exceeding three months from the date of formation, then the directors must convene the first meeting of the members of the company known as the statutory meeting. Now, this meeting is to be convened by a notice given, giving the members 14 days to the date of the meeting. Now, what is the objective of this meeting? This meeting discusses what we know as the statutory report. This meeting is for the purposes of the company's board or the company's directors to present the statutory report to the members of the company. Now, what is this statutory report all about? The statutory report will contain the following matters. Uh, they will they will show an indication to the members on uh, the number, the total number, the total number of shares, the total number of shares issued. They would also be telling members about the total receipts, the total receipts, total receipts. Uh, for shares, the total receipts for shares issued. Then, most importantly, they would also be showing in this report the particulars, the particulars of the directors, the particulars of the directors of the company. So that is the first meeting that is possible within a company known as the statutory meeting, compulsory for all companies that are formed as public, this meeting being conducted as the first meeting of the members within a period of after a month but not exceeding three months after formation. Directors are to give a 14-day notice for this meeting and the agenda of the meeting is to discuss the statutory report. In this report, we have details relating to the particulars of the director. We will have details relating to the total number of shares that the company has issued and members have taken up. They would be showing the total receipts. How much have we received from the issue of all these shares so that it will be easy or it will be possible to make a distinction on whether we have fully paid shares or partly paid shares from the details in the statutory report. Let me discuss the next uh, meeting. The next uh, meeting is the annual general meeting, popularly abbreviated as the AGM, the annual general meeting. Now, this is an annual meeting. 
it's an annual meaning yearly it's a yearly meeting it's a yearly meeting uh, for the members for the members for the members of the company it is a yearly meeting for the members of the company so every other year the members of the company will be meeting at a meeting known as the AGM again this meeting will be compulsory for public companies this meeting is compulsory for public it is compulsory for public companies that every other year they must hold a meeting of their members known as the annual general meeting now after the formation of the company the company has up to 18 months to hold its first agm uh, the company's first agm must be held must be held within 18 months must be held within 18 months uh, of formation the company's first agm is to be held within 18 months of formation so if we are formed in january then we have until next year june to have our first agm as the company so anywhere after formation up to 18 months then we can our we can have our first agm uh, as the company now question of successive agms the company will uh, have the requirement that uh, 15 months 15 months must not lapse 15 months must not lapse uh, between between successive between successive AGMs 15 min months should not lapse between uh, successive AGMs so this rule addresses future annual general meetings so it is our first AGM and we are saying from the date of formation we have until the next 18 months to for the directors to give a notice convening an annual general meeting usually the notice would be a 21 day notice so after our first annual general meeting the question of when do we have our second and after we have our second when can we have our third and fourth and the idea is we must not have more than 15 months lapsing between the first annual general meeting to the next annual general meeting and you would understand why part of the business that is transacted at the agm is the adoption of the company's financial statements where the reporting on the financial statements happens annually so we're imagining a period of 12 months then we have financial statements being laid before the members so that's why we are giving this prescription that with 15 months should not be lapsing which is slightly three months after the end of a 12 period year which is the expected period that the company must have reported uh, must have presented or prepared its financial statements so we have this meeting being held question is what business uh, what is the business transacted what is the business transacted at the an agm what business will be will, will we be transacting at a company's annual general meeting uh, we usually have routine business so to speak matters that are routine matters that will be usual for every other agm for instance AGMs are for the purposes of adopting adoption of financial statements. Adoption of financial statements. We will be adopting them at the AGM every other year. So the financials prepared by the company's board are presented before the members to vote to either adopt or reject the financials. We may also be electing election of directors at the AGM we may also have appointment appointment of auditors we may also be fixing auditors remuneration auditors remuneration at the AGM 
and we are talking about such other routine business that can that is usually transacted by members at the end of the year so that is the agm it is an annual meeting it's a yearly meeting it is compulsory for all public companies we have an indication as to when the company should expect to have its first agm that after we have been formed not later than 18 months then subsequently 15 months should not lapse between one uh, agm to the next and at the agm we shall be transacting this routine business every other year